Good Tuesday morning and welcome back into my office. As we uh, get ready to start today, I just wanted to, to recap a little bit. Last night we did have Rick Grace with us from Disciples Heritage, uh, and I thought it was a great time. We had over 40, 42 people here. Um, I, I feel like uh, not only were was his presentation uh, phenomenal, but the, the questions asked, uh, the overall response from the congregation I thought was very positive. Uh, I look forward to hearing more from y'all in the coming weeks as we look and see what this what direction we are going to be taking. That being said, I kind of want to expand a little bit upon uh, my sermon from Sunday. Uh, for those of you who missed it, you can go to the church's Facebook page, uh, and actually should be the video right below this one on the church's Facebook page, um, and catch up. It's uh, I, I talked about Esther. And uh, specifically, I, I went out of Esther, the fourth chapter, verse 14. But I'm going to start with verse 12 um, this morning. So verse 12 says, When Esther's words were re reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will, will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. We live in a very distinct time in church history. Um, if you read the, all of Paul's epistles, you'll see a common theme in, in just about every one of them where he warns about uh, false teaching. Um, for years now, especially in the Western church, we've been very uh, clear about what's heretical and what's not. And we've kind of limited most of our heretical teachings to, to small areas or uh, TV preachers or, or, or whatever. Uh, but in the last couple of years, that, that, that dangerous heretical ideology and theology has, has weaved its way into mainstream Christianity, especially in the West. Um, I'm only speaking pretty much of the West because the Eastern Church is, is very much an Acts church in most cases, uh, and that's out of necessity. Uh, we've come in a way very lackadaisical in the West. So when, when Esther is dealing with what she's dealing with, and if you don't know the story, I'll, I'll give you a quick recap. Uh, basically, Mordecai offends Haman. Haman is a, is a well-respected member of, of King Xerxes' uh, inner circle, and, and Haman decides he's going to take all of this out on the Jewish people and, uh, and then try to kill all of the Jewish people within the, the Persian Empire. Um, and... Mordecai tells Esther, in essence, you have a responsibility to act. You're in the King Xerxes' um, right ear, if you will. And, uh, and, and fear got to her. She hadn't been queen very long. And like, like I said, it's a long story, so you, if you want to go and read. But she hadn't been queen very long, and she hadn't been within the king's presence in, in 30 days. And his one law was if you came to presence without his... Um, approval that you would die. So she was very afraid, but she had a responsibility, uh, and she, but she lacked the faith. And finally, Mordecai says flat out that if you don't stand for God, if you don't stand for what is right, then somebody else will be put in your place. God will put somebody else to stand for the, the nation of Israel, and you won't be spared. And it's very important for us to realize, and I talked about this on Sunday, how Yes, the Old Testament was talking about the, the nation of Israel. And the New Testament, no, it's not talking about the United States of America. It's talking about the church. So when we reflect back on this, this story in Esther, we should be looking at it from the, the point of view from the church. We should be looking at it from the point of view of uh, who's going to stand for the church. Uh, and we live in a world that's that with political correctness and extreme wokeness. Um, a lot of people are afraid to stand for truth. Uh, truth has become relative. Well, truth isn't relative. Truth is very direct. Truth is right here. Um, stand for that. Because, you know, maybe you were created for such a time as this. I can guarantee you were created for such a time as this. Because if you weren't created for a time like this, you wouldn't be here. You would, be, you would have been born in another time uh, in another place. So you were made specifically for the time and place in which you are. So take advantage of that today. Stand for the church. Be the gospel share the gospel, uh, make disciples, show the light of Jesus Christ because you were created for such a time 
is this. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, I thank you and I praise you for the opportunities that we've had in the last few days to, to dive into your word, Lord. And I ask now that you be with each and every person watching these videos and that you give them the peace that passes all understanding, Lord. The understanding that that throughout whatever is going on in their lives, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, that all things begin through you and all things will end through you. Lord, we ask that you you allow this this deep understanding and this deep respect to, to ignite a revival within us, a revival within our, our, the Western Church, a revival within us individually. Lord, we ask all this in your precious name. Amen. It's Tuesday. Uh, that means we have Bible study at 11 o'clock, and we will be starting in the sixth chapter of the book of Genesis. Uh, I really hope you all have taken time to read it because there's a lot in there. Uh, it's a very interesting few verses, and I don't think we'll be able to come to an agreeable conclusion on what they mean. Uh, it's one of those verses that I think that, uh, one of those areas that I think God made for that reason, that we aren't supposed to know this side of heaven exactly what was being talked about. So, Come with your ideas, come with your opinions. We're going to talk about just about everything. Um, and uh, we're going to see what the text says first and then try to make the, the most out of what we're understanding. Um, I look forward to it as we get into the story of Noah. Um, it's going to be a great time. Also tonight, weather permitting, and it's not looking good, but weather permitting, we are going to try to have drive through prayer this evening from 5 to 6. So please come on out here to the church. And if you want prayer or if you would like to pray with somebody else, that being said, I hope you all have a terrific Tuesday, and remember, above all, you are greatly blessed and highly favored.